We've got one more presentation for today. We've got uh, my good friend, friend uh, Clint Greenshields. It's one of the first athletes that I coached that kind of uh, really challenged what I was thinking about. And we had a lot of deep discussions about lots of things. Uh, we lived in the same building in France when I my first kind of head uh, role in a, in a team. And Clint really made me sort of feel at home uh, in France. And um, yeah, it's, it's really cool to have him. Uh, present today he had a su really successful career as a rugby league player and now uh, is coaching uh, people in Coffs Harbour beautiful place in, in Australia is a beautiful young family and uh, he's experimented with lots of different training systems uh, over his playing career and then and then after playing and he's always looking for the edge a bit like uh, many of us so uh, yeah thanks for getting up early Mr Greenshields to, to share with us this morning Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, sorry about the tired eyes. It's only 5, 5 a.m. here. So um, thanks, Rodrigo. That was awesome, man. It was a really good prezzo. So I'm just going to present a sliding doors scenario. So, yeah, my name's Clint Greenshields um, from Cos Harbour in Australia. Uh, we've got a bachelor's degree in human movement science, uh, diploma in fitness, diploma in neurophysics therapy, I own my gym and I do PT and foundation training. Um, so I'm going to present two scenarios. Basically, the first scenario is a young athlete that's, um, that hasn't been exposed to the ATG system and a young athlete that has. So the first athlete basically is with the old ATG, with no ATG system. So it's the old traditional strength and conditioning programs old mentality where you push through pain and, you know, like the bench, the squat, the deadlifts, the chins, dips, planks, which is pretty common in most sports and especially rugby league. So, yeah, if, um, sorry, it's heavily focused on rugby league and there's kilograms and not pounds and stuff. So um, oh, you're all good, man. That's the point deliver from your perspective. It's good. Yeah. Um, so, most most teams uh, would have these as benchmarks, like your bench, your squat, your deadlifts, chins, dips, planks, as I said. So you're looking at 150 bench, 180 squat, 180 deadlift. Um, your chins are 20 reps with the body weight and dips are 20 reps with the body weight and plank, usually with 20 kilos for how long you can hold for. So, so the hardware, the software uh, conversation. So the software dominant is this scenario one. So as a young 17 year old gets drafted to the NRL and has benchmarks to hit, which was on the previous slide, does his best to achieve the, the benchmarks. Um, all the benchmarks are software muscle dominant and has no emphasis on connective tissue development. So this in turn causes injury. So I know a few of you have probably seen this um, MRI before, either yourselves or your, your clients or athletes. It's not a good picture. But, yeah, so the young athlete gets a, a minor ankle surgery, um, heel spur, and this leads to weakness in the right leg, um, has no focus on connective tissue strength in the rehabilitation, first ACL surgery with a hamstring graft, um, plays four games, re-ruptures the ACL and um, has a second surgery the patella tendon. So if you have a quick look at the timeline, um, just the basic timeline of this young athlete has the first ACL surgery, has second ACL surgery, does the standard rehabilitation, um, gets another chance at the NRL and makes debut in 2004, plays 15 games, has a third knee um, injury, which is a bucket handle tear. I'm sure a few is uh, um, aware of those too. So, Plays 43 games, um, then 150 Super League, in, plays internationally, comes back to NRL, plays locally and retires at 37. Okay, so this is a big one. This is the old system. This is the old way of managing pain. Um, if you look at it, you've got your Voltaren, you've got your Benzos, your Stillnox, the sleep, alcohol, obviously, and... Um, your cortisone injections. So this is focused on the old way of doing things without any ATG influence. OK, 
Okay, so career and income. So you look at this first athlete, he's had 10 years professionally, played two years semi-professional and has a total income of 1.5, so 1.75 mil. Okay, so I want to scenario two. So this is an athlete that's had ATG um, influence, um, you know, this is hypotheticals, learns about ATG from a local coach and social media, starts implementing hardware dominant exercises, understands long range and short range strength, um, gets drafted into NRL team and has an ATG uh, mentality, which is the pain-free ability. So if you have a look at these new benchmarks, it's a lot different to scenario one, um, which is software muscle dominant. Um, obviously when the young player goes to, the, to an NRL team, he's um, gonna have a qualified ATG coach in the future. Uh, so, ATG split squat, the slant board squat, the Patrick step up, the, the Nordic hamstring curl, the hip flexor raise, weighted chins with full extension, weighted dips with depth, dumbbell external shoulder rotation, dumbbell pullover. Obviously, these are going to change uh, with the benchmarks, not the actual exercises, but the, um, you know, like if you've got a netballer or an NFL player, it's going to be different with the, the weight, obviously. But yeah, you have a look, it's a lot different to, to scenario one um, with the old school way of doing things. So have a look at the timeline for this second athlete. He player leads NRL benchmarks, focuses on strengthening connective tissue, has no major injuries requiring surgery, plays 20 years professionally, represents at the highest level and receives every award possible, retires and moves into strength and conditioning, leads the connective tissue dominant conversation. All right, so a bit of a timeline, it's a lot different to that first scenario because you've, you've got plays one season and then makes NRL debut, plays 150 games straight with no injury, which I don't think's ever been done. Plays State of Origin, for the guys that don't know, State of Origin is the pinnacle of, of rugby league. Um, plays for Australia, receives Daily M, which is the highest award wins five grand finals and retires after 450 professional games. So have a look at the pain management for scenario two with an ATG influence. Looks a lot different, obviously. No pharmaceuticals, so you've got no anti-inflammatories, no sleeping tablets, no muscle relaxants, limited ethanol, cold therapy, heat therapy, breathing therapy, light therapy, massage therapy, meditation, and uh, nutrition according to gene and microbiome profile. So. It's a lot different, a lot healthier, obviously. So this uh, scenario two, it's 20 years in the NRL, plays 450 professional games and has a lot different income, 17.5 mil. All right, so um, yeah, why me and why now? Um, scenario one is a brief version of my career and life as a, as a rugby league player. So. 100% accurate, even the pain management stuff, yeah, which wasn't awesome. But yes, yeah, scenario two is is the career that I could have had if I had an ATG coach or I knew about the ATG system when I was when I was a teenager. So, you know, when I went to the Broncos, it was it had to lift really heavy. You know, my my form wasn't fantastic. You know, I was apparently under the best strength and conditioner in Australia at that time. Um, you know, it's no fault of his, but he didn't have any of the, the ideas that um, Ben and Keyes are putting forward now. And I think um, if I had have had that, things would have been completely different. You know, you can't look back. But um, anyway, the world, the world and elite sport particular need ATG coaches. I think this is something huge. I really believe that. And, you know, any age or, or ability can can improve with ATG. So... I'll show you some, some slides of my clients in uh, the next couple. So look, I trust the process and I'm getting great results in myself and my clients. And I trust Keegan as a mentor and coach and also have a gym with 95% of the equipment needed to get started um, as an ATG gym. So the bit of the journey, my journey over the last, I've only been working with this for three months um, and I've worked through the zero and dense programs as a student and a coach and yeah after three major knee injuries i'd never thought i'd be able to to even bend my knees in this 
this position. Look, my form's not fantastic. Um, I've got a lot of improvement to do, but the fact that I can do this with no pain, um, you know, after three months, imagine what I'll be able to do in three years, you know, like I'm pretty excited. So this, I'm just going to show you a couple of clients, 30, 30 sessions a week with my clients. Um, this is one of my clients. He's a professional surfer. He's, his name's Billy. He's um, one of the strongest in the lower the lower limbs um, that I've seen, um, you know, he's, he's been able to do this quite easily, uh, you know, no pain. He doesn't have any lower body injuries, but if you ever see some surfers when they get, especially that back leg and they get that back leg and they got to get really, really low, like he's very, very powerful in that position. You know, there's, there's obviously other areas that we're going to have to work on with him um, other than just the knee ability stuff, but, this is just giving you an example of the spectrum of the athletes and pe- not just athletes, but people um, that can that can um, benefit from ATG. So this is another client. She's on the other end of the spectrum. Okay, so she's 58. She's had one knee replacement on her left side and she's, we're trying to avoid the right side. So she's basically, I've been working with her for two years, but she was scheduled in on in January to get her right knee done. Okay, so I've tried to get her to put it off now um, and just give me a chance to try and uh, get it back to where it needs to be. So, you know, like you're looking at the reverse sled pulls here, like, you know, she's a 58-year-old lady with a lot of knee issues, ankle issues, the ankle's fused as well. So, um, you know, it doesn't mean a lot when you're looking at um, the the 1% athletes, but... When you have clients that um, that range from, you know, a grandma who just wants to to be able to get down and play with her grandkids without um, without pain, mm-hmm. and you have got a pro surfer who's um, you know trying to be better, get that one percent gain. So I just should put those slides in because I wanted you to see the the range and why I'm so excited about it because it doesn't matter whether you're a professional athlete or uh, a grandma just trying to get out of pain. It really, really um, <clears throat> is effective for for a lot of people. So I just have a quick look into the future. I've uh, finished level one. Um, level two is in progress. Level five by August, that's the goal I've set myself. Um, level eight um, in two to five years. Um, the Nordics are going to be pretty tough. <laughs> um, yeah, so and once I'm fast-tracked, I want to be able to to run or advertise that I'm doing knee knee ability zero in my gym, like as a class, I've got a pretty good idea to be able to try and run that as a class. Um, working one on one with the clients and athletes um, to progress them, obviously for them and for myself, and hopefully work with um, yeah with an elite team, not just NRL um, in 2022. Okay, so just some final thoughts. Um, this is just a I pulled up a study from, um, it was published in 2019. It was, um, it was done on 60 athletes, 60 rugby league players for the Newcastle Knights between 2015, 2017. So there's a two year period there. There was basically 37, uh, sorry, 60 players and 37 knee injuries. Okay. So that's well over half of the squad, you know, and out of the 37, there was actually 89 89 injuries. So you basically, there'd be blokes that are having two, sometimes three, three knee injuries. You know, there's um, 61.7%. And this is only one club in one uh, in NRL. So can you imagine the clubs throughout the world, you know, soccer, NFL, NBA, whatever you're into, um, there's a big, big need for to try and cut these numbers in half. And that's only knee, knee injuries. Um, you know, you every other joint in the body can get injured obviously so um yeah if you want to have a look at that study it's a it's a pretty good pretty good look into to knee injuries and um yeah and australian rugby league too so yeah look every to finish up every sport needs an atg coach i'm super excited about the the atg journey for myself and my clients and all of you guys too look i think we're at the pointy end you know, like this is going to be something huge and we're all going to be needed in um, some way, shape or form in the future. So 
look, I'm really excited to be part of the journey and part of this community. So thanks heaps for letting us present and yeah, sorry about the tired eyes and whatever, but appreciate it. Good man. Yeah, it's uh great, great, great topic uh, for conversation. And the, uh, the two scenarios, Ben sort of did that YouTube video talking about, you know, how it might have changed his path. And I think m- most of us, you know, almost every, everyone in ATG has a story, something along these lines. But with yours, it was, it was really clear, like you're a super talented kid and then you just got thrown into a powerlifting type program. You broke and you broke again and you broke again. And then, you know, you ended up playing in France and having those amazing experiences that, you know, you, probably some of the most life enriching things. Um, but it shouldn't have been that way from a physical, you know, physical perspective. Um, and, you know, accidents happen in high contact sports and whatnot, but you, you know, it was clear right from your ankle thing that you weren't, you know, it, it's a common scenario that you get an ankle injury and then the hamstrings weak and then the ACL goes or, or the hamstring goes. Best case, the hamstring goes. Worst case, the ACL goes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, really good presentation, man. And it's cool to hear like it's already, you know, because you've done a bunch of different courses. It's cool that you can sort of see how user friendly this is as well to be able to like apply it with pros or apply it with, with a, you know, an elderly lady that wants to, you know, a middle-aged lady that wants to um, get herself going again. So love it. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. So we've, we've heard those three presentations. It'd be cool if uh, you guys have any questions, you can unmute and, and ask questions directly. Um, I, can, I can always, uh, I've always got questions, but it's a good opportunity for, for you guys as well. Yeah, you can see how how varied this is, you know, three really different scenarios and all really powerful and all really clear application for for what we're working on and how we can make a difference with it in our you know in our communities and flow on effect. So you can either unmute and, or you can ask questions into the chat box if you if you've got some there. I'll give it another second, otherwise I'll jump in. So, Clint, like at now as a, you know, you experienced strength and conditioning for, in teams for a long time. Now you're doing these programs. Like, what would you have thought if you had have been given this training? Like, how do you think you would have gone into games and things like that? Um, or just felt about your weight training sessions if, if you were given ATG type sessions rather than, you know, what I gave you and what, what other coaches gave you? Yeah, look, I think um, being exposed to it before you actually get to, um, you know, NRL, NFL um, system as a young a young guy doing those things, getting a base, I think, um, you know, would have been super handy. But if I had have actually went to Broncos and they were doing some of these exercises, <clears throat> I think you just adapt to it because, you know, same as like I did with Dan Baker when I come in and he's like, um, you know, as a 17-year-old kid, you got to you got to lift 180 you know, squat 180 deads like that was just the benchmark and you do anything to to try and um to try and make that happen and that's obviously you know what broke me early but i think if he if he or someone influenced like like yourself if you were there it'd be like um i'd do anything you you tell me to because you you know you're getting paid to be there you want to you want to achieve and you want to stay healthy so yeah um I honestly think that every single club will have someone, either a consultant like yourself or any of these guys on the chat, um, to help them out. Like, you know, the, the the funnel's too big for yourself and Ben to handle. So, you know, like um, maybe not all the exercises will we'll get into every single, um, you know, NRL program, but I definitely think that there's going to be especially for knees and stuff, man, like there's going to be a big focus on um, that patella tendon strengthening, especially because there's a lot of those injuries. You know, the MCLs are probably the, the, the big ones um, with NRL. They're the highest um, knee injury. Um, so, yeah, anything you can do to strengthen it. So I definitely think if there was an opportunity for me to, to have someone like yourself or an ATG coach, it would have been a different journey, that's for sure. 
I think you're, I know you're, there's, uh, there's, I think some of the clubs are playing around with it. Uh, I, know, I think the Warriors are going, you know, pretty far with it at the moment. And I know some of the players that I've introduced it to now do it on their own on the side of their strength training session. Like they'll just go and do the exercises just because they know that they feel better with it. But um, I think you could keep guys a lot fresher as well. Like that's the one of the, the benefits of it. Like in, as Clint's coach, you know, when we were in France, you know, you you were one of the players who was conscious of like this probably isn't exactly what I need. Like there's there's something else that I need other than um, just trying to like I was trying to get people doing full squats and you know there was there was some positive aspects to the way I trained guys you know ten years ago, but if I had have understood this sort of stuff, like I think it would have been I think you would have bought in more. Um, at that stage, because by the time I was working with you, you'd already had multiple injuries, but then you'd also had a lot of success um, just, you know, with playing as you were and, you know, just staying on the field, not smashing yourself in the gym and, and getting out there on the field and getting the job done kind of thing. Um, but I think you would have gone into games, you know, you would have been able to work quite hard on these exercises and still gone into games fresh, um, which would have been, yeah, a different different sort of experience. Uh, um, this one would be more for like, I know Clint was working with older clients. Um, some, um, so like working with older clients, Samantha was trying to hit in this, like, how do you regress certain exercises and stuff? My question would be more for like, if you're working with someone who maybe is like near a knee replacement or something like really out of shape, do you play around with like just doing ROKP stuff or what's the balance between regressing the other zero exercises versus just not rushing into any of them and just working on the real basics. So I know with, um, with a couple of my older clients, um, I use all the, the zero, the zero program. One thing that I have found useful is using bands and stuff like that, especially with the split squats, like you saw in the video, just to take that little bit of pressure off. So that's another way to regress to, to assist them with certain things. Um, but I haven't really, especially the sleds and stuff like that, I haven't really shied away from using, not using any of the zero program. I don't know um, if anyone else is, is like that, but there's not, um, there's not too many exercises that um, you can't do in that zero. So, um, yeah, I've, I've had plenty, plenty of success with a lot of my older clients, especially the ones that... Um, yeah, that don't have a great deal of mobility and can't put too much resistance into their their system. So, hopefully, that answers your question a little bit, Wayne. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. So I just you can play around with them, just regress them to their ability. Basically, don't be too shy with the stuff. Yeah, look, I've had no issues um, with any of my clients. A little bit with the Nordics, um, you've got to be pretty careful because you can flare up some, some, um, some tendon stuff. Um, I know with a, for a couple of my clients, I was trying to get them to push from the ground um, and come all the way back up. Um, I've now stopped doing that because I did flare a couple of um, of um, hamstring tendons up, but um, you can just regress that to get up to a, a chair or even like a little a box or something that they can just push off, but try not to come all the way to the ground and push their hands off. But um, that's not so much in the in the zero program anyway, but um, that's the only thing that I've really had any issues with, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, with myself, I probably went a little bit too hard every, every day and I... Um, you can overdo it sometimes, but um, if you just be careful with, um, you know, spacing out your days, I can't see any issue. Um, I don't know how anyone else feels about that, but that's my experience with it for sure, dude. A lot of people talk about being able to tolerate more volume and, you know, being able to bring in some plyometrics. I think one of the biggest weaknesses in the system was the hamstring Um with people trying to get that full Nordic and um, sort of kipping out of the bottom and, and that sort of stuff. I think adding in the inner range hamstring work has made a lot of difference. Um, and then, yeah, just 
being smart with that. I think just recognizing super high tension exercises. Um, we, yeah, we can't do really heavy high tension exercises but by slowing things down and just the subtleties, you know, this stuff is easy. You know, it's quite simple to make work for, for anybody. Um, yeah. Makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Um, but yeah, it was great to have everyone on today. And I, I really love uh, these shares. I think there's, there's so much value in you know, hearing how different people are applying it and just making those connections as well. You know, please, um, you know, drop your uh, Instagram links in there, but you can also connect with each other through through Mighty Networks and, and see each other's profiles and whatnot. Um, I think a lot of the great things that will come out of this network will be through the relationships that are built and and people just going out and, and making changes. Um, the majority of people have never heard of ATG still. Most athletes still don't know what, what you know, what it is, why it works. You know, maybe some people have seen the, the account, but they still don't have any idea what it's all about. So, you know, it's still very much like day zero for, for this. Um, and, you know, even those of you who, th you know, think about Charles Poliquin and, you know, he covered a lot and whatnot. Fact is it didn't get out to 99% to of gym goers. You know, they never, they never heard of him. They, they don't know why they're doing, you know, some of his movements might be there or whatnot, but, you know, it's all still ahead of us. Like this is, this is day zero for making a real change in the way high school athletes are trained and the way strength coaches are thinking about their training and, um, yeah, we have a massive opportunity. So um, I love yeah, this chance to connect as a community makes it makes it all uh, all more, the more real. And hearing these real life scenarios, um, yes, yeah, so you can feel free to drop your Insta in there and uh, catch up and connect with with others. Uh, Patrick did a really good job earlier in the week. I, I don't know if we've got the recording for that, Patrick. If you can help us out with it, but did a presentation around uh, the BFR training, which was really cool. Um, you did a great job presenting that. I think that does have application. I think it crosses over quite a bit with how we uh, attack the sled work. Um, I think that there's there's crossover with those theories and the way, you know, uh, Westside Barbell attacks the belt squats and, and the sled work and those sorts of things. I think there is crossover with that and the blood flow restriction. And I've got some cool stuff coming up for you this week. You know, things I've been thinking about. Um, but yeah, thanks guys.